Hey guys, it's me, Seren, back with another video. This is going to be a video on moral objectivity, um, moral clarity, objectivity as a, as a larger um, idea. Uh, I've been thinking about this for a while. I've wanted to do a video on this for a while. Of course, there will be links and information in the description box that there always um, are for people that want to, you know, read a little bit more. But we've been talking a lot and, and, and I've been thinking a lot about um, objectivity as a lot of you guys know, um, I did go to school for journalism, I have a degree in journalism, and there's been a lot of um, just a really roiling reconciliation of the idea of um, objectivity and sort of neutrality in journalism, uh, in reporting, in media, and this idea that has you know, for as long as I can remember, sort of been the backbone of, I feel, American uh, media and American journalism, which is, you know, these ideas around objectivity, you know, we have to be objective, we have to be neutral, freedom of speech, you know, everyone should be able to just say whatever they want, you know, like, it, it's been this whole thing. And, and in, a, in a recent live stream, I said, you know, I was like, I don't know if I could be a journalist, you know, in the current climate, uh, because the the way that um, objectivity has sort of been bastardized and distorted and perverted has led to this huge, just this reckoning all across the board in terms of journalism and media. So I read and I have referenced um, an article and some tweets and some things that were written by Wesley Lowry, who's a black uh, journalist, that used, I'm going to read you guys uh, the the sort of phrase, the phrasing that he used, because I really, really liked it. I'm just going to read you guys a little bit from this New Yorker piece, which of course I will include a link. Uh, what's so terrible about moral clarity? That's the phrase that Wesley Lowry used. He says that instead of, you know, this moral objectivity that we worship so much, right? Because it's, it's this idea that we don't even have morals. We don't even have morals. We don't even have ethics. You know, as journalists, the whole point is to just be totally objective. You can see somebody, you know, you can see somebody fucking dying, you know, by the side of the road. As a journalist, like, technically, you're not, you're supposed to be totally neutral and objective and, like, not take sides and, like, not step in, not help. You're only there to observe, right? Moral objectivity. Wesley Lowry posited this idea of, What's so terrible about moral clarity? What's so terrible about fucking morality and ethics, you know? And the idea of if I see somebody fucking blown up by the side of the road, I should help them. You know, what's so bad about that? What's so terrible about moral clarity? The journalist Wesley Lowry, who won a Pulitzer in 2016 for reporting on the systematic nature of police killings of black people, used the phrase in a tweet earlier this month. He was responding to a decision by the New York Times to run an opinion piece by Senator Tom Cotton that advocated the use of military force to quell protests against racism and police brutality. Lowry wrote, American view from nowhere, objectivity obsessed, both sides journalism is a failed experiment. We need to fundamentally reset the norms of our field. The old way must go. We need to rebuild our industry as one that operates from a place of moral clarity. So if you guys don't know the background of what he's talking about, the New York Times ran this piece by a senator, Tom Cotton, that was basically saying that the state should be allowed to use violence against American citizens that are exercising their constitutional right to protest. Like, there's really no getting around what the motherfucker wrote. Like, that's what he said. And the New York Times ran it, and originally the editor of the of the op-ed section of the New York Times defended it, saying, you know, we, we have to be able to show both sides, you know, we have to be able to be objective, we have to be able to be neutral. But it's just like, just like this dude Wesley Lowry said, like, at what point do we have to have some type of morals and ethics like everything is not everything is not ob ob objective to you everything is not objectivity right there's not two sides to everything and we have these really clear boundaries when it comes to other things and yet when it comes to anti-black racism everything is sort of up for debate under this idea of objectivity and we should be able to see both sides nobody would let an opinion an opinion piece run saying well for the sake of objectivity and you know view from nowhere see both sides journalism let's run a piece about how 
it's very possible that Dylan Roof was totally right in the, you know, the fact that he killed those people in Charleston. Nobody says, like, let's run an opinion piece on why, you know, it's possible that Hitler was correct in his extermination of the Jews. That's just not something that we do. That's not something that's seen as acceptable. And yet when we're talking about anti-Black racism, everything is sort of up for grabs under this idea of objectivity. And it's just like, it doesn't matter what motherfucking Senator Tom Cotton thinks. It doesn't matter what his opinion is. Ultimately, we're talking about American citizens that are exercising their right to protest. And why would you advocate with your platform of the New York Times? Some of you guys might remember before I got banned from Twitter, every single year I used to tweet on the same day. Reminder, New York Times is a white nationalist rag, right? So it's like with your fucking platform, like, why do you think it's like, when do we, when are we going to sort of pivot to this idea of moral clarity? What is, what, where do we want our country to go? Where do we want our media to go? You know, all these fucking white liberals that sit around and talk about never Trump and how much they hate Trump and this, that, and a third, they don't understand that they enabled Trump because they're the ones that come out of left field with all this stuff. We have to be objective, objective, objective. I'm going to read you guys a little bit more. Four days later, the Times media columnist Ben Smith picked up the tweet, cementing the oppositional pair. Objectivity versus moral clarity. Old white male journalists versus young journalists of color. Tradition versus an unknown new world. Because the guards and the gatekeepers of the media as it stands are old white men and white women. Like, white people stand as the guards. And white people with this idea of, let's hear both sides, all lives matter, we're all the same, objectivity, neutrality. It's like they don't even have a concept of morality. They don't even, like, if we're going to talk about, he used the word, Wesley Lowry used the word moral clarity, which I do like that phrase. But I think of it in terms of moral objectivity. Even if you believe in, in objectivity and we need to be able to hear both sides, would you really sit across the table from a motherfucking a baby killer and be like, let me hear your side of why you killed that little kid. It's it, it, again, it's like a very, na it's a very, you know, specific window of what we find to be acceptable in terms of objectivity. And then Andrew Smith, who worked for the for New York Magazine, he wrote a headline, Is There Still Room for Debate? Where he basically completely turned aside all of the things that most of us are saying in terms of like the United States is founded on, the United States is founded on anti-black racism, structural racism, institutionalized racism, all these things we have to break down to the foundation and start over. He totally was like, no, I don't believe that. America was founded on like truth and liberty and freedom and freedom of speech and debate, right? These white gatekeepers have a fundamentally different understanding of the United States, history, media, race, culture, journalism, they have a different idea of objectivity than we do. They have a different idea of morality than we do. And I read this other article recently about this dude that used to work at Facebook. His name was Max Wang. He quit Facebook after nine years and he left this really scathing video on his way out. BuzzFeed got a hold of it and I listened to it uh, I'm going to post a link so you guys can listen to what he said in full. But some of the things that he said really stood out to me uh, because they really reminded me of a lot of the things that Wesley Lowry said as well and a lot of the conversations that we're currently having about the idea of objectivity versus truth. So something that Max Wang said, I'm going to read you guys some, some of my notes on things that he said. He said, we are so fixated. He was talking about Facebook, but what he said is part of this larger conversation. Facebook is so fixated with their ideology, their ideology of freedom of speech. And, you know, our platform is anybody can say anything. So fixated with their ideology that, cons that the consistency of it forces out new thought based on new premises because everything is based on the old premise. We are trapped by the idea of free expression and the temptation to stay within that. We have a commitment to ideological consistency, meaning the ideological consistency of we have to remain neutral, we have to remain objective, we have to show both sides of the argument. We have a commitment to ideological consistency, but who does this consistency serve? And then he said, I believe that we are serving the state, that this ideological consistency is serving the state. So it's just like, we have a, like Max Wang said, we have a commitment to an ideological consistency, 
But who does that consistency serve? We are working to serve the state. I totally agree with that. And when I read that, when he said, like, we have this commitment to this ideological consistency at the at the cost of new premises and new ideas and who is that serving? That's serving the old guard. That's serving the state. That's serving the status quo. That's serving the system of racism, white supremacy. That's serving the system of institutionalized anti-black racism. All these things that serve as the foundation of our country that is baked into the media. It's baked into the academia. It's baked into the medicine. It's baked into everything. And all of these ideological consistencies that we worship we're doing it in favor of the state. And it, 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 it just blew my mind, you know? I also read another piece called Objectivity Isn't a Magic Wand, which I will link, which I also thought was really interesting because similar to how, you know, a lot of doctors, scientists, you know, people that work in medicine, people that work in academia, people that work in these respective fields, they feel like they're somehow above racism, you know, technology, even journalism. They feel like they're above racism. They feel like, well, we're totally objective. So it's like impossible for us to be racist. It's like they don't even understand or or believe that all these isms are baked into journalism. They're baked into medicine. All these things are baked into into our systems, our infrastructure. And these people think that just because they say, no, 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 I'm being objective, that that means that it's a magic wand and they're not doing anything wrong. I feel like a lot of people are also pushing back against that idea because for once, they're starting to know how it feels to be us, you know, Bari Wise stepped down from the New York Times, white, white girl, Jewish girl, talking about some, she feels like she's being bullied for her ideas, that she's not able to speak up because she's a conservative, you know, and it's just like, well, now you know how black people have felt in newsrooms for decades, bitch, for motherfucking centuries, now you know how we felt in, in school, in academia, in the workplace, you know, we don't get to speak up and just say whatever we want, like y'all, because we have to fear retribution, being fired, racism, all these things, now y'all know what it's like, and you're flipping your shit, because you can't just walk around spouting filth all over us, I'm gonna read you guys a little bit more, the protests over the death of George Floyd and the way they have been covered or not covered by newsrooms across the country has widened existing stress fractures in journalism around the topic of race. One of the things that's being called into question is the concept of objectivity. Wesley Lowry, a reporter with 60 Minutes, put some of this into words with a recent essay in the New York Times entitled A Reckoning Over Objectivity Led by Black Journalists. I'm reading um, from Objectivity Isn't a Magic Wand, which again, I will include a link in the description box. Whatever the ideals behind objectivity might be, Lowry wrote, in practice, it translates into an industry in which the mainstream has allowed what it considers objective truth to be decided almost exclusively by white reporters and their mostly white bosses. And it's important to note that this not only leaves black journalists and other journalists of color on the outside looking in, but also making for worse journalism, if by journalism we mean representing the truth about the world as accurately as possible. We have a commitment to ideological consistency who does this consistency serve? The state, the racist white supremacist state. What qualifies as objective journalism, Lowry says, it is constructed atop a pyramid of subjective decision making. Which stories to cover, how intensely to cover these stories, which sources to seek out and include, which pieces of information are highlighted and which are downplayed. So he's talking about how journalism already is not objective because it's already filtered through the white gaze because the white people are in control of everything. And that's also when, when we talk about spin, right? Spin is a journalism term. Everything has motherfucking spin on it. Nothing is truly objective anyway. The piece sparked a conversation on Twitter, including a response from Tom Rosensteel, a veteran journalist and executive director of the American Press Institute. In a multi-tweet thread, Rosensteel tried to clarify what he said were some of the historic aspects of how objectivity became a standard, an industry standard principle, excuse me. The practice began as a way of injecting more scientific rigor into the practice of journalism, which again, we're talking about scientific rigor. We're talking about the scientific method. We're talking about things that are already, people already think about these things as being like magically like free from racism and you know, oh, it's totally objective. The scientific method itself is also, you know, again, like I just said, science, health, history, medicine, tech, academics, journalism, none of these things are free from racism. None of them. 
Uh, the practice began as a way of injecting more scientific rigor into the practice of journalism, he says, but instead it has turned into a devotion to false balance. Love that phrase. False balance. It's a false balance. It's a false balance when you have fucking poor black people that are being tear gassed in the street. And then you have a fucking U.S. senator that already has all the a white U.S. senator that already has all this power and influence pinning an op ed in the fucking New York Times saying that we need to use the force of the state against them. That's a false balance. That's a false dichotomy. That's a false equivalence. Niggas love a false equivalence in the morning of saying, well, I had to run Senator Tom Cotton's piece because, you know, we need objectivity. We need to hear both sides of the story. We hear the sides of the motherfuckers out there protesting saying, stop killing us. We need to hear the side of a white supremacist. It's only fair. That's a false balance. It's a false equivalence. The practice began as a way of injecting more scientific rigor into the practice of journalism, he says, but instead it has turned into a devotion to false balance and other elements of what journalism professor Jay Rosen calls the view from nowhere, which means that you're not putting, quote unquote, any of yourself into the piece. It's just supposed to be like a totally, complete, almost like a completely anonymous, you know, like the view from nowhere, like it's from nowhere, no one wrote it. It's totally anonymous. Even this plays into the, racist white supremacist ideology of whiteness as the norm and the standard and invisible even the concept the idea of a view from nowhere is racist bullshit Rosenstiel is quite right that objectivity started as an attempt to make journalism more rigorous by applying the scientific method a structure and process designed to arrive at an objective truth the truth element of it is what motherfuckers are missing these days but the industry probably shouldn't congratulate itself too much on the purity of the intentions behind this change. Over the next 50 years or so, objectivity came to be seen as a bedrock principle of journalism to the point where some newspaper journalists and journalism teachers argue that dismantling it will kill journalism. But as Lowry points out, Wesley Lowry, what qualifies as objectivity is still in the eye of the beholder, and that eye is still predominantly male and white. While the scientific method may be designed to be impartial, as Rosensteel suggests, it has also been used throughout history to justify some of the most horrific injustices. Scientific studies from prestigious researchers and influential institutions have been used to prove that women are inferior to men or that blacks are less intelligent or that the mentally handicapped should be euthanized. It's not as though objectivity and the scientific method is a magic wand that bestows omnis omniscience. Sorry, I know I can't pronounce shit. More recently, algorithms have been pitched as the solution to a number of social problems, including crime and online abuse, and yet algorithms can be just as biased as human beings can since they are designed by human beings since they are designed by human beings. Even conscientious programmers often wind up codifying their own biases and prejudices into the software they're right. Prime example, I saw some shit where they said that I saw some shit where a judge was like that they think that algorithm should be used to determine whether somebody is fucking guilty or innocent because they're not going to play into the biases of a jury. And then another person that they were having the conversation with was like, but we already have racist laws and shit on the books that already disproportionately affect black Americans. So if you have an algorithm that's going to like instantaneously like scan all the different types of people that are locked up and arrested, it's going to see that there's more black people. So probably anytime a black person comes, it's just going to be like guilty, 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 guilty. It's a fucking machine. This piece also, this is a great piece. And I know I'm basically reading it, but I still think you guys should look it over. This piece also talked about how there are some people that feel like, well, if we lose the idea of objectivity, everything's going to be routed through everyone's opinions. Rosenstiel also took issue with the suggestion that objectivity should or could be replaced by a sense of what Lowry called moral clarity. If journalists take refuge in subjectivity, their opinions, Rosenstiel said they will wind up thinking that their opinions have more moral integrity than genuine inquiry and journalism will be lost. But Lowry argues that getting rid of the concept of objectivity doesn't mean a return to the partisan press that preceded it or a descent into a swamp of subjectivity and opinion. Instead, he suggests that a better approach would be, instead of objectivity, for journalists to pledge that we will devote ourselves to accuracy. Like, we should care not if it's objective and showing both sides bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. We should care if it's fucking true and accurate. Is it fucking true and accurate? Max Wang. 
so fixated with their ideology of freedom of speech that that consistency of it forces out new thought based on new premise because everything is based on the old premise of objectivity. We have a commitment to ideological consistency. Who does this consistency serve? I believe it is the state. Max Wang. Google it. They also included a little addendum at the end of this piece um, about how just like different more links and different conversations on this topic. Teen Vogue talked, and this one I thought was really interesting as well before I close out. Teen Vogue talked to nine journalists in their 20s and 30s about why they believe neutrality is an illusion, which it is, bullshit, and how taking stances have made them stronger reporters. Cameron Baker, editor-in-chief of The Gateway, the University of Nebraska at Omaha student newspaper, said, the truth is not neutral. The truth is American chattel slavery was inhumane. I don't care how many motherfuckers you get to fucking talk about how, you know, it wasn't that bad. And, and, you know, there was nice slave owners. And, you know, the truth is we live in a motherfucking racist capitalist police state. I don't fucking care about the other side. It's obje- that's objectively true. We need to care about the truth. We need to care about accuracy. It's not objective. The truth is not neutral. These little kids know. The truth is not neutral. In this political climate, the truth is that people are being oppressed, harmed, and lied to by government leaders. And Jack McCurkison, former deputy editor of Splinter, said, the only available conclusion to be reached is that striving for a mythical level of neutrality is self-defeating. It's also a form of inherently conservative journalism that can wind up masking the truth in its efforts to achieve objectivity. One final quote before I really close out for real. This is from a dude named Rob Winberg. Objective journalism is a a misleading and dangerous illusion. The concept may be the most poorly understood, tenacious, and dangerous illusion that journalism has ever believed in. Misunderstood because it's confused with independence and impartiality. Tenacious because it seems easy and it's cheap dangerous because it's the biggest lie you can tell to the public and an illusion because it doesn't exist. If we're going to talk about objectivity, it should at least be moral objectivity. But ultimately, I think that everyone needs to concern themselves with the truth and accuracy and moral clarity, as Wesley Lowry said. Are we doing what is right? Are we reporting on what is right? Are we spreading shit that's fucking fake and false and bullshit? Are we, you know, what are we doing? How are we writing? How are we creating? How are we consuming? You know, and what are we in service of? And how beholden are we to our um, ideological consistency? And what purpose does it serve? I also feel like I have an old video called like, just because you say it nice, and you know, just because a lot of people agree with you, doesn't make it right. Because another thing that that Andrew Sullivan and and Ben Smith have said in defense of the running of the Tom Cotton piece is that, you know, oh, over 50% of the United States agreed with the decision to use force against protesters. So at the New York Times, we have a responsibility to show what those people think. I find that to be terrifying. I find that to be such a terrifying idea and concept of neutrality and objectivity because what if the majority of the of the white United States population decides they want to go back to slavery? What if they decide they want to round up all the black Americans and gas us in gas chamber, chambers? What if they decide they want to shoot all of us, run us over with tanks, you know, what which they already have. You know, what if they decide, you know, like just because the majority of the United of the racist fucking white people in the United States think something doesn't make it true, doesn't make it right. And this idea of, well, we're beholden to them because of objectivity and we need to show both sides is so scary to me. It really scares me. Like, it really does. Because it's just like, a majority of people think horrible things all the time. The majority of people were not against ending slavery. The majority of people fucking hated Martin Luther King Jr. while his ass was alive before they fucking killed him. Like, the majority of people are against progress. The majority of people are against progress. And one of the last things that Wang said, in his, ver- in his farewell video, Wang accused Zuckerberg of gaslighting employees and of a bait and switch during an early June meeting in which the Facebook CEO explained the decision on the Trump looting post. 
why was Zuckerberg only talking about whether Trump's comments fit the company's rules and not about fixing policies that allowed for threats that could hurt people in the first place, he asked. Because he said Zuckerberg just kept saying, like, well, it doesn't go against our rules because our rules claim that he can say that. And then he said, well, then why don't we change the rules? You know, why are we beholden to these rules? Watching this just felt like someone was sort of slowly swapping out the rug from under my feet, Wang said. They were swapping concerns about morals or justice or, ner or norms with this concern about consistency and logic, as if it were obviously the case that consistency is what mattered most, you know? Like, well, we have to be consistent, you know? We've said we're going to be objective, so if that means we have to fucking, you know, say that, you know, Nazis have a right to be heard, that's what we have to do on our platform. It's like, or we could change the rules of the platform to ensure that truth, accuracy, and moral objectivity are what come to the forefront. You know, I fucking, I hate fucking Twitter. Twitter is a piece of shit. But I kind of feel like these like tags that they've been putting on tweets are actually a really good example of some moral objectivity. So even if you say, I want to be fake objective and so everything can go on our platform, but for the sense of, you know, for the sake of, morality and ethics we're gonna put tags on it this is some nazi shit you can still read it if you want but this is some nazi shit just so you know that to me is closer to moral objectivity what the departing engineer said echoed what civil rights groups such as the color of change have been saying since at least 2015 Facebook is more concerned with appearing unbiased than making internal adjustments or correcting policies that permit or enable real world harm. Like they're more concerned, all these journalism outlets, media outlets, social media, Facebook, they're more concerned with appearing unbiased and objective, like as if that's the ultimate goal. Truth, clarity, accuracy, ethics, all that shit has been thrown out the window. This consistency ultimately serves the serves the status quo, which is a system of racism, white supremacy, and the social hierarchy that's built institutionally, infrastructurally, to keep black Americans at the bottom. That's who you're serving. That's who Mark Zuckerberg serves. That's who Facebook serves. That's who the New York Times serves. That's what all this shit serves. Tons of links will be in the description box. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed this one. Really, really think about it. Moral objectivity. Food for thought as always. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Food for thought as always. See you guys next time. Peace.